Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Today is October 28th, 2020. I'm your host, Arusha Pierce, and today we have David Saito Chung on the show. David is the Deputy Markets Editor of Investors Business Daily, and he's also part of the leaderboard team. Thanks for being here, David. My pleasure. Thanks to be back. Thank you again. (laughs) On today's podcast, we are going to talk about the current markets. We're going to talk about ways to learn our investment strategy, and we will also end the episode with a few current ideas. Uh, Before we get into the current markets, David, I, I wanted to also mention to everyone that you are also an author, and here's your book right here, Investor oh, Business Daily and the Making of Millionaires. And David, I, I don't think I ever told you this, but I got this day one when it came out. That's fantastic. I, I, I went, uh, this is when I was in Boston. I went to Burlington, Massachusetts, the Barnes and Noble there, day one. I got it. And uh, it's a lot of good information here, but my, my favorite part were the markups of Bill's charts. You, you got Bill to do a few other markups. And back then it was rare. You know, I was trying to get my hands on any example to learn the system. And uh, so I I definitely appreciated you. You had Bill mark up a few more charts so, so we could take a look at it. Uh, excited about the fact you brought that book uh, into the show. Thank you for, for, for one, you know, it's uh, 2004. That's when it published, and that was to mark the 20th anniversary of the newspaper. Oh, wow, wow. And okay. so Bill was very gung-ho about this book and and had uh, no issue at all with marking up those uh, weekly charts of some big stock winners. So I'm really glad you pointed that out. It kind of reinforces that point about looking at the weekly charts. Don't, don't look yes. at a, at a five-minute intraday by, no. by itself. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and, and weekly charts are going to be very, very important this week. Because in the current market, the market is mm-hmm. under pressure. Now, starting today, we had two distribution days on the NASDAQ, four on the S&P 500. I'm going to venture out, David, that we're probably going to get a distribution day on uh, both of the indexes uh, today. Uh, wh- what are your thoughts about this market right now? Certainly, it is is beha- behaving the way we'd expect since we change that outlook to quote, uptrend under pressure, right, Irusha? That happened on Monday because Monday was also not a pretty day for the major indexes. The the Dow had given up all its gains since its rare follow-through day on September 30th, right? And the NASDAQ uh, poked below its 50-day moving average. So Irusha's got the the, the really wonderful daily charts of Marcus Smith up there right now. And you can clearly see that the 50-day moving average is no longer offering a floor of support right now, yeah, as you can see. It's no see. longer poking through the 50-day. <laughs> right. it, it, it crashed the party, and, and, and it is falling. Exactly. Um, Interesting how it, it held at 11,000 for the day, right? We, we sometimes see yeah. round numbers, uh, century marks or millennial, millennium marks uh, offering at least some short-term support. But we we can't we can't autom- you know can't really rely on that uh, by right. itself. Uh, uh, let's see what the news uh, brings. Uh, and we're in the midst of uh, of an earnings wave, right? With all the quarterly results. Exactly. And uh, yeah, we we knew that this was going to be probably the most critical week uh, of this month and probably in the the next uh, couple of months because uh, we had to survive. Obviously, we have the election next week. It's going to be a lot of volatility on that, and we're seeing that already. Uh, we're having all the COVID numbers are, are hitting new highs. That's bringing volatility. Exactly. And we have most of our stocks reporting this week, or most of the stocks that we're interested, they're reporting this week. And and it's not just this week. Tomorrow is like the mega day. It's like, remember, remember like during election times <laughs> yes. when the primaries are Super Tuesdays, it is going to be Super Thursday. Uh, and for for the markets, and it's going to be very important to see how a number of these stocks uh, react to their numbers. Totally right, and and so far, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, shook up the market today uh, after their results late on Tuesday. Yep. The, the volatility index of the CBO, the CBOE, the Chicago Board Options Exchange, uh, hit the highest level since June. It actually even exceeded that. Uh, 
early September peak uh, in terms of options volatility. So fear has come back into the market, Arusha. Yes. Uh, yes. I would expect that there's some discussion of that, uh, both in tomorrow's IBD live show. Uh, and there you go. Arusha's got the, that daily chart of the VIX. Uh, we like to use it uh, to mark potential short-term and long-term market bottoms. And uh, you can see uh, in that chart, look at that, first of all, that amazing uh, skyrocketing uh, move in, C in in the VIX uh, in March ahead of the bottoming, right, uh, yeah. right? In March 23rd. Yep. And then uh, mo more recently, uh, the market uh, turned in, in, uh, in early September. And it, that coincided with, uh, just like where Arusha is pointing out to, a mini spike in fear. Yeah. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast uh, on the audio version right now, maybe you're driving your car, uh, working out or even sleeping, when, when you wake up, you can go to your computer, go to investors.com slash podcast, and you can uh, take a look at these charts. I, I think it is uh, very valuable uh, to, to go through some of these. We'll, we'll talk about more charts in, in this episode. Um, so, so David, we, we are in that, um, we, we, we're, we're, in, we're in under pressure right now. We are on the edge of potentially a correction, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so let's talk about one of the first most important rules uh, that uh, everyone needs to uh, get down. And that is cutting losses and preserving your capital. That's the, the main rule I learned uh, first a long time ago when I started learning this in 2000. And from 2000 to 2002, you know, I didn't realize that we're in this uh, long bear market. Mm -hmm. uh, but all I learned how to do is sell very quickly, and it turned out to be a very, very valuable skill, and I got tons of practice at it. But let's talk about that concept, talk about why that's so important, especially when the markets are a little bit more treacherous like they are right now. It is uh, truly uh, the golden rule of investing, as we like to say, and by keeping your losses small, uh, ideally, no more than 7% or 8%, uh, any of us can recover from that kind of loss. Much more difficult to recover from, say, a 25% loss in a stock because in order to make up that money that you've lost in the market, uh, you need to pick a stock that goes up 33%. And if you let a, um, a, a stock that maybe was really strong in the past, but now has truly topped and is uh, headed for a major correction, well, um, if you wait until it falls uh, 50%, guess what? You're going to have to pick a stock that doubles uh, in order to re recoup that major loss. So the math of investing is very unique in that way. Uh, one thing, uh, just like what you said, uh, Arusha, I've learned the hard way uh, of uh, controlling my risk, but uh, no one is going to look out uh, for your portfolio more than yourself. And you have to bring your own sort of uh, built-in insurance to your portfolio, cutting those losses, uh, keeping them to say three, four, five percent uh, would be almost like uh, like uh, trading like Bill O'Neill, the founder of IBD, because yeah. uh, he uh, repeatedly said that he strived actually to get out more quickly, uh, not just wait until they fall seven or eight percent, but if he identified sudden weak action, uh, an expectation breaker, uh, gap downs in his stocks, bad action in the industry group of the stocks he's invested in, uh, or a general uh, market drawdown like we've seen the last couple of days, uh, he would get out quicker. And uh, I'm continuing to get better at doing that and striving for that smaller average loss. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 that is that is really important. Now, one thing that you want to be careful of, you don't want to uh, ideally, you don't want to do the the all in, all out kind kind of stuff because these markets are fluid, and so a lot of times I I always say you know let the market slowly push you out and also slowly pull you in. Uh, but everyone should be going through all of their stocks, making sure that they're still above the 50-day moving average, making sure they're not giving any major, major sell signals because we never know. I mean, we didn't mm -hmm. know back in February when the markets really came unglued. And uh, let's hope we're not going to get anything like that. But you know, once in a while, those are in the cards too. But we're always trying to – we're defense first, right? We're always going to play defense first, and we want to put our money – to work when the environments are are in nice uptrends uh, because it just becomes that much easier uh, to make money. Um, but when all of a sudden it starts to change, like it has been the last few weeks, uh, you, you have to start listening to the market and, and, and paying attention too. 
Oh, that's an excellent point. If I may add that when you're selling quickly uh, the stocks that are not behaving well and you're quickly raising cash, which adds a buffer to your portfolio and allows you to be more um, uh, on the defense and on the sidelines waiting for better better conditions. And so uh, learning learning to uh, those, those basic uh, rules of defense is, mm -hmm. is just going to make the experience more pleasant and you're going to be ready to go when it's time to go on offense, right? Exactly. Uh, that's very important. So if you're hoping and wishing and, and disappointed with, the, with the, the, the poor stocks in your portfolio, then you might miss the, the big move in others. So, you know, not cutting your losses uh, can compound uh, your mistakes. You know, um, if, if you don't have the cash to invest in a bigger, uh, bigger and better uh, stock, then you lose not only uh, your valuable capital, you lose the opportunity uh, of a future big gain. Exactly. And David, you, you spoke about offense. And even though it is a little, a little depressing right now with, with the way the markets are acting and, and a lot of us have given back our profits over the last uh, few weeks, um, that, that, that there is going to be a time where these markets do turn. And so you always want to uh, you want to play defense when the markets are a little bit more treacherous, but you always want to kind of have that mindset on being on offense and being prepared. And so let's talk about, and, and one of your nicknames, first of all, David, I'll, I'll, I must say that, you know, your first nickname is Hatman and you didn't wear a hat. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, that, you know, you know I, uh, I didn't want to take uh, any uh, uh, thunder from the beautiful hats you have in the background <laughs> right. uh, of, of, of your home office there. But uh, I usually do wear one of those two uh, during the live show. And I thought, well, uh, if, if people really want to uh, believe that uh, I am the so-called hat man, they're going to have to go to IBD Live and see for themselves. So. I, I like that a lot. Now, the <laughs> second nickname that, that you have is Product Placement Dave. And so we are going to talk a little bit about our services uh, here and getting ideas because, you know, Dave, David, how long have you been working at IBD? Well, uh, most of it full time, but uh, since 1999, after covering the Tokyo stock market uh, for a few years in, in Tokyo, Japan. And so just like you, Arusha, and many of us uh, listening uh, or watching this podcast, uh, we share a common passion uh, yep. for the market and how it works and, and how to increase your wealth. So uh, I, I personally have no, no issue at all trying to promote a specific feature or screen or stock list uh, within both MarketSmith and investors.com to help and, and, pe help and, people. And simply it's because we're using them, right? You're, yes. use, you're using this. So let's talk about um, where to get some of these ideas or where you get some of these ideas um, on investors.com and, and IBD Weekly. Mm -hmm. And so, so talk about one, uh, one section that you recently uh, found, uh, some stocks uh, on i.com. And, and I, I guess more specifically, uh, the weekly paper of IBD. Yeah, thank you, Rusha. I mean, it's not, you know, big, I'm kind of an old school journalist, right? I, I used to write for uh, a, a paper, <laughs> which is truly a newspaper made of paper. And I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm showing uh, the IBD weekly news, newspaper from late July. And it might be hard to see, but it says on the front cover, a new hope for cancer treatment. The second word new. That's the ending can slim, right? Yep. The, uh, yep. and, and this was a fantastic article by one of our tech writers who highlighted uh, the, the brand new technologies uh, and of these companies that now uh, will allow doctors to diagnose uh, cancer way, way earlier than what is possible now through a biopsy or through an MRI or any other uh, current technology and that's with uh, just a little bit of blood uh, from from your finger uh, to find out uh, exactly uh, whether you have the genetic uh, disposition for a specific uh, disease and 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 which specific treatments can help one of the main companies that I've actually now invested in is garden health and arusha has got the daily chart up of yep. GH right there mm -hmm. and you can see that recently it it cleared a cup with handle. The buy point was uh, around 99. And uh, you can see that it had a nice move up and then pulled back uh, 
sort of in, uh, you know, a choppy but yet methodical fashion yeah. to its rising 50-day moving average. And that pullback near the uh, pivot point around 99 gave uh, individual investors a second chance to, to actually buy shares. Yeah. And so, so Garden Health was one of the companies that was, was uh, talked about here. Another one mm -hmm. was Exact Sciences, uh, ticker symbol yes. EXAS. That's correct. Uh, and so I just pulled this up on a daily chart in Marketsmith. You know, what's really unusual about these two companies is that uh, uh, until I was uh, an active participant in IBD Live, I tended to invest only in companies with earnings growth and sales growth. Now, these two companies are not profitable yet, but the yeah. sales growth is very impressive. And, and these are not small, puny numbers. Look yeah. at EXAS, right? Exact yeah. Science is 408 Monster. million in Q3 sales the quarter before that amid uh, a, you know, the, the, the worst uh, economy in our country since uh, the 30s, revenue up 35%. Yeah. Exact Sciences is famous for the Coligard test uh, so that people who w would prefer just to, to take the, an easier uh, test uh, for uh, colon cancer, they, they, they can take Exact Sciences um, uh, technology. And look at that big move yesterday, right, Arusha, yeah. on, on the results. On the earnings, uh, they, yeah. they, they uh, announced a key acquisition to broaden their product portfolio. And uh, I would expect that there's going to be uh, more updates uh, as as to the progress in their tests for other types of, of of cancer yeah and so uh so so that's one section and th those are some ideas that that you can mm -hmm. get especially from, from that front page there, there are a lot of great uh th there's always that great article and and it's an easy way just to stay on top of some of the new changes that are going on that are not always obvious um, so let's take a quick break, but remember the market is in under pressure right now. So make sure your stocks are still acting healthy, that they are still above the 50 day moving average. And also remember we are in earnings season. So make sure you know where, when your stocks are reporting earnings. Uh, when we return, we are going to talk more about some of the other ideas that David has found on investors.com and IBD weekly. And also we're going to talk a little bit more about learning the system. So stay tuned. I am here with Scott St. Clair. Scott's one of our senior product coaches at Marketsmith. Now, Scott, there are a ton of publicly traded stocks just on the U.S. I think it's over 5,000 stocks. Who has the time to go through all of these stocks and find the very best ones? Yeah, most people don't, right? So what you need is a tool like Marketsmith. We have decades of research on what makes a great winning stock. So we've done all the research for you. So we're going to try to highlight those specific stocks with those great data points. So if you're looking for that next great potential big winner, orange stock ideas button, you just click on it and you've got some of the main reports that we use, including the Growth 250. Yeah, and the Growth 250 is the first list, list that I go through on the weekends. Yeah, it's the most popular one, but there are others. There's the Breaking Out Today, Stocks Near a Pivot, and then the Blue Dot List, right, which is very popular. It's gonna show you the stocks with the best relative strength. So we've done a lot of the work for you. What you have to do is review these lists. You're going to come up with some of the best ideas in that current market environment. Perfect. Mark Smith saves you time and makes investment research that much easier. For more information, go to Investors.com slash podcast 2020. David Saito Chung is our guest on Investing with IBD, sponsored by Market Smith. Okay, David, let's... Uh, Let's first, uh, before we get into talking about more about the system and how to learn the system, let's uh, let's continue the conversation that that we left off on mm -hmm. in, in the first segment about finding some ideas through Investors.com uh, and IBD Weekly. And you, you find another great set of ideas um, from IBD recently and, and dealing with ESG. This is obviously a, a really growing trend and... Uh, they, they did a great article on that, and you, and you found some uh, pretty interesting stocks there, right? Sure did, Arusha. I was actually quite stunned by the list, uh, this, this new list that appeared in IBD Weekly that published last week. And this, comp this, this list is, is uh, not simply about what you might think, like those companies that are trying to solve uh, uh, 
climate change or um, uh, other, other hot button issues. These are companies that have incredible growth. Uh, number one, NVIDIA, NVDA, one of the top chip companies that's so so let's uh, before, david before we get into yeah. that let's uh so this uh let's go over first how to find the Perfect. esg article because there was an esg 50 right that they recently just and i'm asking too because i didn't well, i didn't look at it too you know sometimes i mean i i fall prey to this too where i'm so used to looking at marksman marksman that mm -hmm. i don't it's not in my habit to always go and and check what's going on on uh the weekly paper um, yes. so we're on investors.com right now. And so I'll, I'll go to the search. Yeah, uh, let's, you know. let's go there. And let's say you, you know, you didn't see that story uh, on the day that it published last yeah. Friday, uh, that was October 23rd. Well, uh, simply write in that search box, which has been recently improved uh, a heck of a lot. Uh, uh, kudos to, uh, our digital product team. Uh, you can see Arusha type in ESG and instantly on the right side, there is that story, right? The, with the green leaf uh, icon. And uh, if you click on that, then you'll have some links to the actual list uh, as well as the the main feature written by my, my colleague, Alan Elliott. Right there, uh, just uh, third or fourth graph in, uh, you can see and there's, there's a Lexus. And there's a Lexus as well, all right? Our, our, uh, doing great job with with all those videos uh as well as helping us with the with the podcast and just below that you can see there's a place where you can click see the full list of the 50 best oh, esg companies so if you don't mind clicking on there then you'll see that there are some names that if you are, are a can slim investor you'll immediately recognize yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I mentioned nvda and Pool uh, that recently joined the long-term leaders uh, screen on investors.com. You got West Pharmaceutical, you got Adobe. Uh, Adobe's under pressure now, but what a great move it's had since the yes. March bottom, right? And Lamb Research, Best Buy. These uh, many of these companies are leaders in their fields, uh, and uh, the 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 feature highlights those that must have a composite rating of 80 or higher. So you're looking at the top fifth of IBD's database for fundamental, technical, and fund ownership factors. Uh, all these stocks are also priced at least $10 a share because anything under 10 uh, tends to be ignored by the best mutual funds and the, the portfolio managers around the globe. So you can see just like what Arusha is doing that Generally, they have uh, very good numbers overall and uh, are outperforming the stock market. So that's, I think, the most important thing to, to understand, that uh, it's not a value-based screen. It's really a, a growth-based screen and uh, with special qualitative factors that have been developed uh, in, uh, in partnership with MSCI. Yeah, MSCI has the kind of the ultimate ESG uh index exactly right? they're the kind of the authority on that uh, developing that with some some metrics there so that's pretty neat that that we're using some of mm -hmm. their stuff and now we're putting our ratings on top of it uh for those who are a little bit newer what does esg stand for david uh i understand it to be environmental social and governance factor <laughs> i think you nailed it because <laughs> i couldn't remember it <laughs> but but uh and i learned that partly by watching the lexus video you know and and uh it's really uh it's so funny that uh when i was a reporter in japan the the key word before esg was i think csr which was something like co corporate social corporate. yeah that's right corporate social responsibility yes or, yeah uh, but it's certain since certainly expanded um in many ways and now esg is it, it's a it's a serious theme uh among institutions which means that individual investors should not ignore it yeah and 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 a lot of it it does make sense if they're if some of these companies are taking extra precautions uh, and to, to be more environmentally conscious and mm -hmm. uh, things like that, uh, it is requiring them to do much more quality control on their whole operations. And, and a lot of times and ends up with them, uh, if they have like a really good niche, their products are, are that much more solid. Uh, so it, it was uh, when I learned about it more and more over the last couple of years, I, I was like, oh, you know, that actually makes kind of sense if you want to be a little bit more conservative uh, and uh, look for truly quality companies, 
you can take take that list, the MSCI mm -hmm. list, overlay uh, a number of the metrics that we use uh, in at IBD, and and you're gonna find uh, some stocks that are not only quality companies, but they're also in favor with the market. Uh, just would like to only add that uh, you know the, the 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 big fund managers uh, are paying more attention to the the the, the beliefs uh, and the value systems of younger generations such as millennials uh, and and uh, I guess it's uh, Gen uh, Z is it uh, I, I guess the, the after the millennials and uh, there are numerous surveys that show that uh, they care. To, they care more about the companies they invest in, particularly their their uh, their overall values and 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 what they're doing to contribute to bettering society. So uh, th th that makes a lot of sense for companies uh, to pay attention to their to their customers in that way. No, well, well said. Now, David, uh, I'm going to take advantage here because you. I'm I'm always so busy over at MarketSmith, and I'm focusing on the MarketSmith product, and I don't always get to take a look at leaderboard. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're focusing on leaderboard and IBD. Uh, let's go over uh, take the scenario for especially for those of, who are a little bit newer on on the podcast and might be newer to investing, but they're they're getting a little bit more interested in IBD uh, or the strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, t talk a little bit about kind of the about leaderboard, just very quickly, just some, some of the kind of the value propositions. Because I'll tell you, when I started out years ago, you know, before I bought your book, uh, when I when I started out, I was just reading the paper. It was incredibly hard <laughs> to to learn this. I didn't know anything about stock. It was very very difficult, especially on my own learning. This is before meetup groups that really even were there. Right. Um, right. And so just trying to do it on my own, I couldn't find anyone else to really, uh, you know, join me in, in trying to tackle this. But uh, uh, these days, it's become a, quite a bit easier. And I've noticed it, and I'm sure you've noticed it when, you, when you've spoken to uh, subscribers. Uh, people have picked this up, and they're, they're, they've gone pretty advanced pretty quickly. And so leaderboard is, is one way that, that you could really get up through the learning curve. Uh, and so talk quickly about the... Sure. Uh, I, I think you hit a lot of the points, right? That leaderboard helps you learn uh, selection, buying, selling, holding, and and just overall general sense of where the, where, where the leadership is uh, in real time. And, you know, Arusha, you, you mentioned the, the charts annotated in the book uh, by Bill uh, yep. about past winners. Well, we're trying to annotate the charts and identify the bullish action and the right buy points in real time currently so that you can have uh, some positive results uh, in a good uptrend right now. So among 6,000, 7,000 stocks in the database, you're generally not going to see more than 10 to 20 names uh, in the main two main lists of leaderboard. And right now, Irusha is showing the leader's list uh as well as the leader well the top list is the leaders that are near a buy point buy meaning point, right. that they could be actionable tomorrow or they are actually have broken out and are within our proper buy range you're not buying extended and you could be buying them right now and then the other leaders that are on the second list are those that already broke out have made a, a tremendous move and should not be chased up and but we're still keeping them on the list because uh, these, these really true winners are going to give you more than one chance to buy and make money. Now, the, the, the overall leaderboard uh, service also includes the daily big picture. It includes uh, annotated charts of the first 10 stocks in the IBD 50. Those are great ideas. Basically, we are screening all of IBD screens as well as using screens from Marketsmith that we've constructed to then... Uh, deliver in our hope uh, a silver platter of, of of a few select names from which you can decide. Okay, I really like this name. This company resonates with me. I see now, uh, according to leaderboard analysis, it is uh, at the right time to buy, and therefore uh, it's actionable. Now, the top ten in the IBD 50 also have annotated charts on the daily and the weekly charts. Uh, the weekly charts show when the stock was added or or removed from uh, any list, and particularly the leaders near a buy point and the leaders list, 
And right now, Arusha, you've got, for instance, Crux. Uh, yeah. That's a top 10 name, number one, right, in IB50. And uh, we did not put this one on leaderboard uh, uh, as it cleared this very, very deep cup of handle. But we're going to watch it now closely, given that looks like as the market is down, this one's going to have maybe a sixth straight up week in a row. And meantime, as that weekly chart show that the, the red – line the 10 week moving average line is, is trying to catch up maybe a pullback to that line might uh, offer a new buy opportunity and we would alert our uh, subscribers to that perfect so so that's uh leaderboard i i think it's an it's an excellent uh service for especially for those who are a little bit newer because it simplifies it they, they choose a numbers a, a fewer set of stocks and then they're just kind of annotating them and so you can you can learn it in real time you know day by day week by week uh, it, it's uh, in, in many ways, the way you learn is just by watching some others who've been there doing it for a while before you, you, you learn in real time. Now, I, I do want to bring up another uh, uh, service that we're, we're both part of, David, mm -hmm. IVD Live. We're both really proud of this one. I think it's been uh, a, hu a, a huge success. But uh, I, I'm, I'm especially proud. I know you are, too, because you see a lot of these comments, too. Uh, how quickly people are learning the system because you want to talk about mm -hmm. real time. It's every day. We're just talking about the markets for that first hour. Uh, what have, and it, we're almost at our year anniversary also for exactly kind of crazy, but November uh, 6, 2019, it was day one. <laughs> so and next week, yeah, next we week are right? less than two um, weeks away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I have found it not, not only being on the show and just explaining, you know, my thoughts and stuff like that and hearing the others, like you, David, on the show, but even when I'm not on it, I have it on. It's like every morning I just turn it on because you guys are, exactly. the team is finding stocks that I forget about or they're reminding me other stocks that, you know, yeah. I, I, you know that I, I, they've slipped off my radar. Um, so I, 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 I find it personally very helpful, but I've heard from plenty of others uh, that, that uh, they're learning this much quicker. It took me years. To, to get some of these things done. It re honestly, it took me like seven, eight years, I think, to try to really wrap my head around it. But I, I'm just seeing people in in like a year or so now, a couple of years, you know. That's really, really that's a great advanced. point, given that, you know, you you were at that time, right, not, not a full-time employee of either right. IBD or Marcus. Full-time customer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> full-time customer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and boy, wow, the, the, the sort of offerings we have have so evolved so much thanks to technology. Yeah. And, the, the, I, I think uh, you you, you uh, uh, made a great point about how you and I learn from the wisdom of others on the show, uh, su suggesting, "Hey, could we look at That's this true. stock is actually yep. breaking out?" And yep. uh, we, they they offer a third set of eyes, so to speak, uh, yeah. to identify uh, those stocks that really have that potential to make a bigger move than the S and P five hundred which is bogged down by laggard stocks, whether it's right uh, oil and gas stocks. You look at those. Uh, uh, utilities have uh, still starting to try to recover from that massive sell-off in February and March. And then uh, look at the banks and the SNLs, the JP Morgans and Bank of America's, Morgan Stanley's, uh, and, and other money centers. Uh, they're, they're nowhere near buy points. So where are the buy points? Well, uh, IB Live covers generally... Uh, in my estimation, 20 to 30 really solid quality names every day. Seems and so like it, yeah. that, that's a great watch list to begin with. And then, you know what, Arusha, I think another great benefit is that people get a sense of, hey, it's time to scale back uh, the number of holdings or to uh, maybe press the metal, so to speak, and start to be more aggressive, get more into the market uh, because the the market is telling us these these uh, uh these signals and and we're just responding we're not trying to dictate uh what the market should do uh we're listening to the what to the market and uh there's no one who knows more than the market itself keep in mind right the market itself is sort of like a collection of the wisdom of the crowd uh in terms of major trends they right. might be wrong at, 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 at the market extremes you know at market tops or market bottoms when there's too much too much uh, enthusiasm and hope and optimism and or too much fear and despair uh but 
just like what you've got there, Purple Innovation. That's a great example of one that we've talked about a couple of times. Yeah, and, and that's that's why I brought this up because I had no idea what this stock was. <laughs> and and and, and uh, the viewers kept bringing it up in the Q&A. So we pulled it up yeah. and you know, we were asking, and, and we were asking, I, I don't really know. And, and there were, then some, some people were starting to think, oh yeah, it's a mattress. They, they do the mattresses. Um, I guess mail you, you can mail the the mattress or they're they're, they're mm-hmm. buying cushions and things like that. Uh, but some of the the viewers they were giving some really detailed answers. Mm. They're like, oh yeah, I I've bought from these guys, mm. and and they they were they they were saying a number of things, and so we we kind of put it all together on that show that I ended up buying this stock shortly afterwards, and I, I actually doing okay on it. That's great. Uh, so those, yeah, those are some of the things that you know. I was like, ah, you know, let me let me just take a shot because it is setting up. It was it was a really strong uptrend, and and now it's funny. I see ads left and right hmm. <laughs> from these guys uh, on it. Oh. But this is just <laughs> one example of uh, uh, of some of these stocks that we're, we're also benefiting. In when, even though we're, we're on the show, but we're benefiting just in real time, people are just finding some of these ideas and asking about them. So uh, just I, a quick I comment to add, you know, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, good for you that you, you've uh, uh, making some money in this one. And look at that market cap on market Smith, uh, market cap of 1.6 billion. This is definitely not going to be uh, the first, first stock mentioned on CNBC or uh, on the, on the six o'clock news. Yep. But, but you know, our, you know our attendees are sharp. They're into, they're they're very disciplined, uh, and they're eager to find new winners. Uh, here again, it's the ending can slim, and it's an interesting looking chart you've got there weekly. Uh, because look at from twenty fifteen to twenty seventeen. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was doing. It, it, <laughs> yeah, time, yeah, it but, must have been. Yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, I'm not sure. It, but but it, but you know, ultimately, it, it bottomed out, and the part pattern recognition of Marcus Smith uh, identifies some of these uh, patterns. Some of them were pretty deep, and and the, the stock had wild action. But more recently, uh, I'm sure, Rushi, you looked at that most recent cup base and thought, "Wow, this is pretty orderly. It's acting like a, a potential a potential winner." Yeah, and, and yeah, because it was like a super strong uptrend, and and then they were putting this cup, and then everyone started telling all these stories and it's like it kind of does make sense why they're, they're doing well. <laughs> so so sometimes you know you 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 stumble on some of these ideas and and you know take a little bit of a shot and and they they work out so it, it, it that that was really the that was kind of a collective effort <laughs> from from the whole ibd live uh community but i i think uh, for those who really want to learn more of the strategy uh these are ways that you can learn. If you're a visual learner, mm-hmm. learning in real time, uh, IBE Live uh, is is uh, a pretty effective way to do it. If if you want to kind of sit back and see the more traditional way, there's a leaderboard there. Uh, but in the end, it's just taking that first step and and uh, taking a little bit of action and and learning and doing it for yourself. It, as I mentioned before, I. I Never traded stocks. I didn't know what stocks were before I got into IBD, and it was very scary for me uh, to buy that first stock. I, I was terrified mm-hmm. to to buy it. But once you kind of got past that, it got a little bit easier and and easier. Um, and so I think these days, with some some of these uh, tools there for those who are interested, uh, you can get through that learning curve a lot quicker than either of us ever got through. Just one more comment on the chart. You know, it, I'm oh, glad yeah. you brought up PRPL. Was it Purple Innovation? Yeah. You know, uh, we might have a chance to talk about uh, the value of short interest. Uh, in other words, a number of shares sold short by short sellers in the stock, thinking that the stock will go down. And on that Marcus Smith chart, one thing I really like to look at among high growth companies is that short interest at the top left corner. It says, I think it's about almost four days worth of average volume in order uh, to turn those sold, shares sold short uh, into um, uh, to, to cover those. And, you know, what's amazing, Arusha, is that uh, given the current average daily volume of PRPL, more than five million shares are still currently short or as of the latest data. And that's a big part of the float. Um, yeah. which we can see right that on the, kind of the weekly chart. Yeah, yeah. That, this is kind of unusual. And sometimes 
uh, uh, when the stock is showing strength, has got good fundamentals, good institutional um, sponsorship, then the shorts can uh, eventually turn into longs and add some more fuel to the rally. Yeah, no, it, it's true. And, and and what is kind of interesting with shorts and short interests, um, with our stocks, the, uh, some of our stocks are going to be heavily shorted because uh, the market mm -hmm. doesn't understand it and doesn't make any sense uh, mm -hmm. to a lot of uh, investors out there. And they don't understand how game changing uh, the company is and, and that they have a chance to really take uh, a lot of market share. Uh, and so if I see a stock with a lot of short interest in it, like close to like 10 days short interest, mm -hmm. and it's forming a base and it's going into earnings, I usually say a prayer for those shorts because <laughs> if they are wrong, they are going to be on fire because they're going to be down and, and that all that short interest is gunpowder at that point. And they're going to be forced to cover. Those are all future buyers. And so they all, I've seen it over and over again with, with mm -hmm. a number of the great, great stocks. They just keep doubting and doubting it and just, and they just keep getting run over and over again. Um, and that's why it's nice to just look at the chart, see, see, follow the trend and, and be it. So fun. true. So true, Rusha. And just think about, right, uh, not every trader or investor around the world is using can slim. They're, yes. I mean, and other, and there's, they're, therefore, they're not using charts. They might just be relying on their their own intuition or feelings like, wow, this stock has just gone up so much. You can't go any further. It's overvalued. They can form any kind of opinion. But our approach is trying to take uh, the facts and, and use the facts to our advantage. And so that's, that's what helps uh, every individ, individ, individual uh, uh, obtain an edge with this system. Perfect. So getting better at anything takes time and finding ways to shorten your learning curve can make a huge difference. And, you know, you might find yourself in a, a crazy market like we've been in right now where things, when they're in uptrends, they work a lot better. So coming up next, David and I are going to talk about a few ideas. Stay tuned. Market Smith will give you a huge edge in the stock market. Better stocks, bigger profits. Market Smith is the top research platform for IBD. It's just the best tool for individual stock selection. Everything within Market Smith is designed to bring those best stocks to the surface. It does a lot of the work for you of filtering down to the potential leaders. It's when you take the training wheels off and you're ready to invest on a more professional level. Market Smith will help you take control of your investment life. If you want to get serious about investing, start your membership today. We are back with David Saito Chung on Investing with IBD, sponsored by Market Smith. Okay, David, let's go into a few ideas. And um, these three ideas that we're going to talk about, um, they're, they're from Leaderboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something that might be a little bit sacrilegious here. But I'm, I'm going to pull up the wow. leaderboard chart. <laughs> my loyalty. It's like, yeah. it's like my loyalty to Marketsmith uh, makes it kind of hard. Entering the dark uh, side. Gonna... Entering yes, the dark exactly. side from, from Marketsmith. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, friend. <laughs> <laughs> but hey. uh, the first stock is Adobe. And so I just pulled up a leaderboard chart of mm -hmm. Adobe. And so uh, what do you like or don't like about this chart now? Well... What I don't like right now is how the stock has really come down well below that 10-week moving average. Uh, and Arusha, you can yeah. point out that red line on, on the weekly chart. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we got a weekly chart here. And so that red line points to the average closing price over the past 10 weeks. That's roughly 50 days of trading action, uh, two and a half months. So yeah. it's, it's a significant period of time. And you want stocks generally to be on the north side of that 10-week moving average, not on the south side, which is which is happening right now. Now, the, the silver lining here is that what was a budding cup or a cup without cup with handle pattern, one of the most important types of patterns you're looking for as a growth investor, may actually turn into uh, another bullish pattern, which is called the double bottom. And so right now you can see today, on Wednesday, we closed just under 457. It's just a few points above the first low or the bottom of that cup, which is around 452. Oh, you know, a, I'll switch that daily chart. Yeah, let's go to a daily chart. And you can yep. see that right uh, on that day in September, 452.52 was the first low uh, pre that preceded that nice rally back up past 500 and close to the left side highs of the base. 
uh, and then now we have the second sell-off. Well, double bottoms are actually one of my favorite patterns to look for because it shows that uh, a lot of selling has occurred, and if the stock can recover, then it's on firmer ground. Those shares that were uh, dumped by, by certain holders are now in generally firmer uh, hands of those with more conviction in the company. There's plenty of reasons to be to have conviction in a company like Adobe, which has really uh, helped a lot of people and a lot of businesses uh, digitize, right? Uh, their, their business, uh, create videos to promote themselves, uh, to handle documents. They, you know, they're, compet they're competitors with DocuSign in the yep. eDocs market. They're also uh, a, a, a true leader in marketing uh, analysis because we of their use some ability. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yep. And so there's a lot to like here. And you can see on the fundamental panel of leaderboard, uh, very, very strong ratings. Uh, the last quarter, uh, last three quarters, average uh, EPS growth, 30% year over year. Pretty darn good. And 99 EPS rating, composite rating very high. And so at this point, what we're, what we're trying to do is uh, see if the pattern can complete itself and that the stock can uh, show, sh shows a, a nice enough rebound that maybe there will be a new buy point for either those people who have uh, a nice paper gain in it and are looking for an additional entry point or those who are brand new to stock and looking for uh, a breakout. Yeah, and, and uh, going back to this uh, maybe potential double bottom forming, mm -hmm. It really reminds me of what we were talking about in the first segment. Uh, even though you want to play defense when the market or stocks are under pressure, you always want to kind of have that offensive, uh, you want to have your mindset more on the in offensive mode mm -hmm. where uh, you want to think about this. Just because it's undercutting, yeah, it could be in trouble, but if it comes back pretty quickly, you want to, I always had trouble with that, with that early on. It's like all the stock is done for a while and then, take my eyes off of it for a month and here it is breaking out of a double bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so exactly. Exactly. You want to kind of think about that and, and say, okay, this could, uh, this could be a shakeout and, and said to the great company, you know, if this market turns around, it could give me another opportunity to get into it. I think for now, uh, for all of our listeners, uh, you will, you want to pay attention to two things. One, does it undercut that first low of round 452? and produce a real nice shakeout because a good double bottom will feature a second low that actually undercuts that first low. And then secondly, watch to see if the stock can rebound ideally in, in heavy volume and get near that uh, middle peak, which is exactly a 519.60. Yep. At some point, if the stock uh, starts to really recover, we're going to draw a line across that high exactly like what Yerusha is, is uh, doing and that would be a proper buy point uh, for a double bottom once that stock crosses 51960 ideally by say a dime or more uh, then we are in the, we, we get the suggestion that the balance has now shifted toward heavier demand as opposed to heavier supply or uh, uh, an intention to sell and distribute shares to the, to the general market. So it's too early to tell what's gonna to happen to this point, but uh, you know, Arusha and I and others on IBD Live, as well as the leaderboard team, will be watching for that technical action and watching to see if that blue line, that relative strength line also starts to turn higher. That would be yes. very, very important. Yep. Okay, let's go to the second stock. And, and the second stock here is uh, JD.com. I do own uh, shares of this one. And uh, so we have it here on the leaderboard chart. You have some markups here. What do you like about it, David? I just like how it's kind of moving sideways uh, amid uh, this new sell-off in the market, right, Arusha? And uh, earlier in the day- It's a huge difference uh, yeah. <laughs> be between, we were looking at Adobe, which is about to make new lows. And now you look at JD, you're like, wow, this is this is an, a, a pretty nice uptrend. Totally right. Uh, and. So you can see, uh, we mentioned the relative strength line had, had been falling in Adobe. Well, that's not the case for JD. It's at new highs, uh, and that is unusual strength ahead of a breakout past a potential 
buy point 85.49. So, you know, if, if you're not watching the market uh, 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 often during the day, you might want to send an alert for that price or maybe even say 82 or 83 so that you know, okay, the stock is approaching that buy point. Now I'm going to start paying more attention to it. Uh, it's holding support at that green line, the 21 day exponential moving average. We found that really great stocks tend to respect that line uh, and not only hold above the 50-day line. Uh, the, the left side panel just goes to show how many uh, green dots signifying that it's meeting our canceling criteria for earnings and sales, return on equity, uh, increasing amount of funds owning the stock, uh, relative strength. You know, you, you really want to pick the leader and not the laggard. And uh, really, I'm, I'm really impressed with the way JD is acting uh, so far after a nice run up. It's just like what Arusha you're showing there from yep. uh, an initial uh, first stage bottoming base as we highlighted uh, back in 2018, 2019. We, we have that annotation. And these annotations, like I say, are not done well in hindsight. They're done as they're appearing. Yeah, no, that's a, this is just, a, I mean, just looking at these charts, it, it's a great way for those who are newer to go and take a look at a number of these examples, kind of like the examples I was talking about in the book at the uh, your book in the beginning mm -hmm. of the show, how excited I was to get to see, see a few more examples. You know, the more you look at these and you see annotations, your eyes are going to just start getting better and better at recognizing them in in real time. So uh, JD.com, uh, they're one of the biggest retailers in China, and. Mm -hmm. uh, they what what's kind of interesting with them the that that I've that I've learned is they they spent a number of years building out their infrastructure. Alibaba was kind of more like eBay, where they're connecting uh, third part uh, two buyer and seller together, and and all the shipping kind of just takes place. But uh, JD.com kind of takes care of everything, kind of like what Amazon's doing, right? Their distribution centers and and they're they're the ones delivering the packages, and so they spent a, a while uh, building all that out. And now it's really uh, it, it's it's really a working out for them, and and so it's trading quite well, and it, it's one worth uh, adding to the watch list and, and keeping an eye on. And uh, go ahead, David. You know, uh, Irusha, when you mentioned that specific insight on IBD Live, uh, I stopped everything I was doing just listening to your uh, to oh, what you were saying. Right. <laughs> and, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I it, it, because fact check. oh, no, 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 not gonna fact check. No, no. I, I, I thought you know that was a great point Arusha made and made me even more interested uh, as an individual uh, to be a potentially uh, an investor in this one. And uh, I, I just want to add the fact that yeah, this this company has uh, some serious sales. It is a mega cap, over 120 billion in market value. Uh, a third point, that current cup with handle has no down week in heavy volume. That's really impressive to me. Yep. And you know, uh, when we see bigger volume bars on the upside, those blue up weeks, uh, you know, that's a telltale sign that. Uh, the Fidelities and Invescos of the world or, or large countries' uh, pension plans are picking up shares. And they are, and in effect, by buying those shares and holding them, they are really shrinking the supply of available shares to be sold. And that helps create that big breakout. Yeah, no, it, it is acting uh, quite well. And so let's see what happens if this market can kind of hang in there and, and, and take another leg up. Mm -hmm. JD.com might have a chance. Uh, and if, and you know, I mean, even though we're sounding very optimistic here, listen, if, if the stock starts to break down and I'm down 8% on it, I'm out at that point, right? I'm going to cut my losses in the end. Something's off. Either it's me or it's the market, uh, but I'm not going to fight uh, the movement of the stock. Uh, and I'm going to always uh, play defense when needed. Um, okay, let's go to the last one. And the, the last one is sale. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, more of a cybersecurity play, right? Exactly. Uh, this one only recently hit our radar on leaderboard. Uh, never been on leaderboard ever since we started this, this uh, service in 2011. So we're coming close to 10 years uh, of leaderboard. Uh, and wow. Uh, wow. You, know, you can see on that weekly chart, we always identify when the stock was added to leaderboard, and you can see in the bottom right, you have that blue annotation added, added to leaders as a half size position 
on September 30th. And we now uh, recently, uh, uh, thanks to customers' suggestions, added the exact time of the day as well as the entry price when we send out an alert to our subscribers to Leaderboard. Uh, let me just uh, add that half position uh, means within a portfolio, a model portfolio that's devoted to growth stocks only, uh, a half position, think of it as generally going to be 5 to 6% of the entire portfolio value. value. Uh, we believe in, in concentration. When you're right, you want to be right in a big way. And when you're not right, you cut your losses short. It's really that simple. The hardest yep. thing is really executing. And so a full position on leaderboard would generally be uh, taking up 10 to 12% uh, initially of the portfolio size. As it grows, then it will actually become a bigger part of the entire portfolio. But we want to uh, treat each stock as, okay, Half, is a half size position, or maybe a quarter size, or maybe full full size. It kind of depends on what stage of the market we're in. It depends on the type of stock we're looking at. If it's a very wild stock with a with less of a proven record, maybe we'll start with only a quarter. In this case, we decided to go with a half because one, we didn't get the stock during that cup with handle breakout at 2405 as seen in June. We just annotated that just to illustrate, okay, this is where the true initial buy point was. And some of you listening on might have gotten it there and all the power to you. Well, we actually added it on that first test of the 10-week moving average or the 50-day, near that 50-day line, just like what Arusha is pointing out to on the daily chart. Uh, and that is a good entry point for a, a really great winning stock. Uh, relative strength line going the right way. We just like how right now, there is a four weeks tight entry point uh, and we offer two buy points, 47, where the stock has shown clear resistance, as well as the standard uh, buy point of 48.23, which is 10 cents above the highest price within that uh, unique little pattern of tight trading. Perfect. So there are three stocks that are worth considering and adding. Uh, to your watch list. And, and as mentioned before, these stocks are part of Leaderboard. So, so there's a, a little sneak preview right there. Uh, thanks, Dave, for joining us today. Oh, great, great, great talking with you again, Arusha. Thanks for having me on the show once again. It was, it was, it was a blast. Next week, we will have Dan Fitzpatrick returning back to the show. Dan is the founder of StockMarketMentor.com. So that's it for this week on Investing with IBD. I'm Arusha Pierce. And thanks for listening. And for this week's Nilton Charts, make sure to go to Investors.com slash podcast, where you'll find details for each episode in the podcast episode section. And make sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate it. You can also send us your questions and comments to investingpodcast at Investors.com. We would love to hear from you and may use your comments on an upcoming episode. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.